Michael Lamonaco prepares the first course from New York City. He presents an herb salad dressed with basil oil and features seared diva sea scallops with chive sauce. Timothy Cardillo cooks the main course from Lenox, Massachusetts. It's seared venison served with asparagus, a potato rose, and a fruity papaya orange juice sauce. Dessert is done by Joachim Splichal in Los Angeles. The dish contains pieces of croissant, nuggets of dark bitter chocolate in a vanilla custard with wild turkey sauce. Michael Lamonaco is one of many bright cooking stars in New York, but he represents a twist to a trend. While many chefs seem to be getting into performance, leading up to and including sitcoms, he started out as an actor, then got into chefing. His appetizer is seared sea scallops, chive pan sauce, and salad. So we'll begin with the basil oil. What I did was I blanched basil, fresh basil, in hot water, boiling water with a little bit of salt, and then I shocked it in ice water. And that's what I have here. And I want to squeeze out all the excess water. And I'll transfer the basil to a blender with some additional salt and olive oil. Now we add our olive oil. This will be our basil oil now, using an extra virgin olive oil. What I want to do is puree the basil. Okay, I'm going to add more oil. And I'm going to puree the basil When the basil has been entirely pureed, then I'll strain that through a fine strainer, refrigerate it, let it stand overnight, and strain it again the next day to get this beautiful basil oil. Now we can move on to our scallops. Diver sea scallops or dry sea scallops not dipped in any salt water, seawater solutions that are used as preservatives. I have a pan heating, and I'll season these with just a little bit of salt, not too much salt, some white pepper, some olive oil, just before it smokes, we'll add our sea scallops. And I'm going to cook the sea scallops for about two minutes on each side. Try not to shake the pan, let them cook. Let's take a look at our herb salad now. For the herb salad, I have fennel fronds and fresh dill and flat leaf parsley and some basil leaves that I'm just going to tear by hand. This is our mixture for our herb salad. You can use some mixed greens if you like. And when we're ready to plate our herb salad with our scallops, we'll dress them with some of that basil oil. Scallops cook very quickly without any flour, nothing but a little salt and pepper to bring out their flavor to a beautiful golden brown. Now, scallops are just about cooked through on the second side. We don't want to overcook them. We don't want them to get hard and rubbery. And I'm going to let them rest for just a minute while I make the chai pan sauce. Chopped shallots and olive oil. Don't let the scallops brown too much. We just want them golden. And to that, we'll add some dry sherry. Let the sherry reduce for just a minute. 
and just chop a little bit of chives that will finish this pan gravy with this sort of pan sauce, very fast pan sauce. When the sherry has reduced by half, we can add a few tablespoons of butter. Take it off the heat. You don't want that to break. You're just making a very light, frothy butter and sherry reduction. And add our chives to that. Dress our herb salad with our basil oil. Just a little bit right in the center. A little more basil oil on the plate. Just the seasoning for a little flavor. A few chive fronds. And then we can finish the plate with a little bit of balsamic vinegar that has been reduced to a very thick syrup. Cranwell Resort and Golf Club, situated in the Berkshires in Lenox, Massachusetts, featured at time of taping the food of Timothy Cardillo. He grew up on his Italian grandfather's dairy farm and was nurtured on good food. Most of his early work was at New England inns and restaurants. Here's his seared venison. He starts the potato rows by slicing russet potato on a mandolin. Slices are overlapped, seasoned with chopped parsley, black pepper, and salt, then rolled into the rose shape. The rose goes into a small ramekin, is drizzled with olive oil or clarified butter, then baked at 350 for eight to 10 minutes. This is my marinade of, for the venison. It's three cups of French brandy, and I have about two ounces of golden raisins and two ounces of dark raisins, and I put some fresh rosemary leaves, and I'm gonna add some fresh seeds from some fresh pomegranate some fresh dark Angelino plums to my marinade. I only let this marinade for about four to six hours at the most. The venison is dried before searing. It's seared in olive oil. I'm only going to saute it on each side for one to two minutes. The venison is finished in a 350 degree oven for five and a half minutes. 
In the same pan, the chef makes the sauce, starting with chopped shallots, then the marinade liquid. my marinade, I'm going to reduce this by half. I've added two ounces of uh, venison stock. In another pan, blanched asparagus is briefly warmed in olive oil. This is my papaya and chili oil sauce with fresh rosemary, which I made by um, peeling and seeding some fresh papaya and pureeing it with fresh orange juice. One papaya to two cups of orange juice. And I added some fresh cracked black peppercorn and some fresh chopped rosemary. stock reduction. Patina Restaurant was opened in Los Angeles in 1989. Owner chef Joaquin Splichal and wife Christine have since opened six Franco California bistros, museum cafes, and a takeout cafe, not to mention an event catering operation. His dessert this time is called chocolate croissant pudding. I'm preparing for dessert today. We have a croissant chocolate pudding with a wild turkey sauce. And I'm starting with the custard and the croissant pudding. The ingredients are eggs, bitter chocolate, fresh vanilla beans, real full, regular white sugar, cream, and croissants. Uh, they're regular baked croissants. We cut them into pieces into larger pieces. This is a matter of fact, it's a perfect dessert for winter time. Put this in a soup bowl. And here we have the bitter chocolate, which I will chop up a little bit more. just sprinkle it over the croissants. For the custard, five egg yolks. Then 
You whip the eggs with... Oh. You whip the eggs with the sugar. You add the sugar to the egg. Just whip it for about one or two minutes. <clears throat> you cut the vanilla bean in the middle As you see, there's a lot of mark in here. You place your knife. You take the vanilla out. One side. I'll say on the next side. The other side. You whip it. And as you see, you have all those little black spots. You add the cream. You add the cream too the eggs and sugar and really mix it very for about 30 seconds. <clears throat> the custard is basically ready and this you can also use for a regular creme brulee and you just pour this over your croissants and the chocolate and put it in a preheated oven of 300 degrees for about 20 minutes. And you really want to fill it up. The next step for the croissant pudding is the sauce. It's a vanilla wild turkey sauce. And we have the following ingredients. We have eggs, sugar, cream and milk, vanilla bean, wild turkey, and a little bit of powdered sugar for decoration. And we will start off pouring the milk or the cream into a pot and bringing it, up, bringing it to a boil. Separate the eggs. Separate the eggs, we add the sugar to it. Just whip it for a minute. Again, use a vanilla bean, cut it in the middle. Take the mark out. Whip it Mix the vanilla bean with the with the egg and the milk. The milk came to a boil. And we're adding the hot milk to the eggs and that sugar.
The sauce goes back into the pan, is stirred over heat until thickened, then strained. Let's put it through a china cap in a chilled bowl. And you just chill it down. It doesn't allow the sauce to cook anymore. And we add the most important thing. We add a little bit of wild turkey. As you see, croissant pudding is ready. And the chocolate melted, the, the, the croissants are, are nice and crisp. Of the wild turkey sauce. With some powdered sugar. And the most important thing about the dish, it has to be warm. 